Welcome to our Good Friday reflection. Without a doubt, it has been a roller coaster of a week. With Prime Minister Boris Johnson in intensive care, Scotland's Chief Medical Officer resigning, an increase in the number of people with coronavirus, and an increase in the numbers of people sadly passing away. We will all know of someone who has the disease or someone who has lost a loved one. It certainly has been a roller coaster of a week. That first Holy Week was a roller coaster for Jesus. With the adulation of the crowds on Palm Sunday, with sharing a meal with friends on Maundy Thursday, final lessons to them on what it is to be followers of Jesus, the church, of washing the feet of his friends, showing how we serve other people. And then that moment of movement from the praying anguish in the Garden of Gethsemane through the betrayal by his friend Judas leading to his arrest, to the trial in the courtyard of the high priest. Let's hear some of that story from John's Gospel. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in the synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me, surely they know what I did. When Jesus said this, one of the, the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this the way that you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you hit me? And then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. And there was no let up in the religious official procedures. Jesus was led from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor, and by now it was the early hours of Friday morning. Again from John's Gospel. Pilate went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews, but now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And then Jesus is sentenced to die on the cross, a place of agony, a place of shame, a place of loneliness. John tells us, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And before we too quickly look ahead to the joy of Easter Sunday and the celebration of the risen Christ, let us take these hours, these days, to reflect upon the anguish of Jesus, of the isolation that he felt, of the injustice of it all. And as we do so, as we think of the enormity of what Jesus went through, we can then understand or feel something of Jesus' love for all the people he died for. The world that he loved and his death and love for each one of you. As Christians, we know that his, it is his love for us and all that he went through for us that confirms our faith and hope that he is with us even through these difficult times. Times when what used to be normal has changed. Times when we have to serve the other person. Times when we grieve with our friends and sometimes our families. 
and gives us the hope that we shall see through to the other side of the pain, of the newness, of the darkness. As the hymn writer George Matheson wrote, O joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain, that morn shall tearless be. Prayer is so important and continues to be important. It's important to pray for one another. And I would urge you, encourage you, to pray for Marge Robson, one of our elders, whose husband, Billy, passed away on Tuesday evening. May God surround her with his presence and reassurance at this time. I pray that you will continue to love and serve and pray for one another until we meet again on Easter Sunday.